welcome back to my channel hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel i want to thank you guys so much for subscribing to my channel and for following me on instagram and on facebook for those of you who follow me if you have not yet followed me on instagram you can go ahead and follow me at at journey with me kc i'm just going to give you guys a little bit of an idea how we got to you know purchase our house um and then i'm going to go into the steps that you need to take in order to go through the whole process with nhc because that is how we did it um so yeah here it goes so you know how life can just come at you like i don't know life just have a way of just popping up out of the blues and just turning everything upside down at like in one millisecond and that is what happened for us um for those of you who follow me on instagram you guys will know that i got married on february 2nd 2019 so that was like one year ago a little over a year ago now and so like my husband and i for the longest while we have been trying to purchase a house it just never happened and it's not something that we wanted to rush into um but last year after we got married this is when everything just started to just fall out of place when i thought things would have fallen into place it actually fall, fell out of place so a month after we got married exactly a month after we got married we were sleeping one day it was on a weekend i remember and when i woke up i saw a lot of missed calls from my landlord and i was wondering why was my landlord calling me so much time and then i realized that he also sent me a message on whatsapp the message actually said he wanted his keys at the end of the month so we were in march remember we got married in february the second day in february and on march 6th I'll see exactly a month after a month and probably a week or a couple of days. On March 6th, I got this message from my landlord. He said he wanted his keys at the end of the month. When I read that message, my heart sunk to the ground. My heart started beating as fast as when Usain Bolt is running. I could not process anything. The only thing that came to my mind was why did i do something wrong did we do something wrong and you know i just a lot of things kept playing over in my mind as to what would have been the reason why he would have asked us to leave so i started to call him and when i started to call him i wasn't getting through to him there was no he wasn't answering his phone so i sent messages and i was asking why but there was something deep down inside of me like the lord was just saying to me okay don't worry so i really wasn't worrying i it, when when i saw the message i it is uh, it's, it's nature to when you get bad news your heart just sink and you just you have a lot of things start to, to flow through your brain and but after the initial um after the initial heart sunken moment um i was i wasn't I wasn't all that worried I was worried because I wasn't getting through to him but I wasn't all that worried so I wasn't really looking for any place to rent because it's like the Lord was telling me that this is where we're going to stay so it turned out that um, eventually eventually he explained to me that he had sold the house the house that we were living in he told me that he had sold the house so that is the reason why he asked us to leave we ended up staying we ended up staying at the same property the same house the house that we are renting because after talking to him um i eventually did get through to him and after talking to him and he told me that he sold the house um we we were we were kind of looking for places to rent kind of but if you know when you're when you feel like your gut telling you or I, I, it's not my gut it's like god telling me that listen this is where you're going to stay so we weren't really putting any urgency into it to find anywhere to, to rent um but 
we spoke and I told him that based on the wedding, you know, wedding costs a lot. So we used up a lot of our savings and um, we couldn't afford to, to go and rent anywhere else, basically. And it was the truth. Um, so he spoke to the person that he sold the place to and they were really, they were willing because they, they weren't in the island so they were willing to keep us here until they are finalized whatever it is they are, they are finalizing um so that 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 whole turmoil came like right at the worst time right at the worst time the worst possible time we depleted all our savings we had no money left we were basically living like paycheck to paycheck so when you use up all your savings on wedding you know how that go and i mean my wedding wasn't um uh, overly the top wedding because i wanted to keep the, the money down to where we could afford it and it was still a lot for me and for my husband so you know we weren't really in a position to, to go and look anywhere else to rent really and i was not in the, the mood to move to anywhere because everybody knows that when you move moving is a struggle and i really wasn't i really wasn't feeling it not one month after i got married um so yeah so that is what actually sparked us to start really and seriously looking for somewhere to to, to buy for a property for ourselves i'm only 27 years old and i mean for the longest while i believe that i should have had my house a long time ago i wanted to buy my house from 2013 i started the process of purchasing of trying to purchase a house from 2013 and it is now seven years after and i mean god works in mysterious ways and yeah so nothing happens before it's time and what i wanted to say to you guys also is um don't rush into anything if you see that it is not working out it is just not working out i mean sometimes you really want something and you feel like you want it now but it's just not working out just allow the process allow god to do what he's doing because sometimes it is not the right timing and you just have to trust god in whatever it is that you are doing um so as i promised as i said to you guys i'm going to share with you guys about 10 tips that i have or the 10 steps that i went through um in dealing with nhd to actually go about to purchasing the house um Purchasing a house can be a tedious, tedious and long process. It doesn't have to be long because it can take probably be two to three months the longest. Or if you do everything right, it can take two to three months. Um, so I'm going to share with you guys the process that we went through. It might be 10 steps, it might be nine. I was working through it last night to do the video for you guys and then I cannot... Um, so work with me so i'm gonna put the steps on the screen while i talk so i wrote them down so if you see me looking down that is why i'm looking down so the first step that i have for you guys is to find out from nht what you are qualified for if you are if you are working with government it depends on the, your salary and all of that so it depends on how much you earn i believe um so you know how much you qualify for i know the government had raised the the ceiling to 6.5 so what you need to do first and foremost is as i said find out from nht how much you are qualified for that's the first step in finding out from NHT what you are qualified for, you will have to take some documents with you um, to actually get them to do the process. So I know you have to carry a TR in your ID, your NIS. I think also you have to carry your last three months pay slip. If you are fortnightly paid, it will be last six months, I believe. Um, and I think you need a job letter as well. I think, yes, you need a job letter as well. So TRN, I'm going to put them on the screen. So TRN ID, last three or six months pay slip, and um, NIS and job letter, current job letter. Um, so that's the first step. 
the NSG office that I went to was the one where I started my whole process was the one at New Kingston. That's where everybody go, right? I would believe that's where everybody go. So that's where I actually started my process. Or we started our process. Um, I went there and we went to the mar mortgage unit. So I wanted to say that so you guys know where exactly to go. Step two. Now this step is very important guys, very very important. I had to do this, I personally had to do this because if it is that you live on a budget, you have to do this. So this step is you need to find out how much money you guys have in savings that you will be able to put up as deposit. Do a financial analysis, see how much money you have in savings put away that you can actually use to put towards your deposit. You can also find out from your credit union or your bank if it is that you want to go that route. But you have to also bear in mind that you don't want to put too much of a strain on yourself. So you don't want to go and borrow any additional funds because you're going to have your mortgage to pay. So you have to keep that in the back of your mind. How much money can I afford to pay monthly? So you don't want to have to put yourself on a strain. So I would suggest, I would suggest, sit, see how much money you have in savings and then you probably get a small loan to offset that amount. If it is that you don't have enough in savings. So you can go to your credit union and find out how much money they would be willing to lend you, you know, in a small loan. Or you can go to the bank and find out. But remember, you want to keep that amount very low because you want to, you don't want to have a lot to pay when you have your mortgage to pay each month. So you have to think about the interest rates also and think about the payback amount. Step three. So step three is where it gets, you know, for me it was kind of fun and it was challenging at the same time and it was stressful at the same time. All of those things bundled up in one. Step three is to start house hunting. So we started house hunting, um, I won't say right after like we got the bad news. We started house hunting probably about last year. Uh, August, I believe, around last year, August 29 in August 2019. Um, so we didn't start immediately. We started after we heard we heard that you know you're gonna stay. Um, we wanted to stay and continue paying the rent and whatever, whatever. So we started house hunting around August 2019. Um, we weren't looking. We were looking, but we weren't looking, looking, looking. It wasn't getting serious. Alright, so let me explain. So when we started looking, I actually downloaded a lot of apps because at first my husband was looking through the Gleaner. He bought Gleaner every Sunday and he looked through the Gleaner every Sunday. I, on the other hand, I use technology. I, I don't, I really can't bother with looking through people now. So I went on, on, on Google. I went to Jamaica Classifieds. I downloaded all sorts of housing apps from all of those realtors. I downloaded Keys. I downloaded Jamaica Classifieds, as I said. I looked, I, I joined housing groups on Facebook. I asked my friends, they would, that would, they, would they would also look out for me if they see any place or hear any place um, that was being sold. Um, so for me, that was what we started initially and i mean when you start looking there are gonna be a lot of prospects a lot of things that you see that you like bearing in mind guys that you have to also keep in mind the amount that nht told you that you were qualified for for us we were qualified for 6.5 million each so i was qualified for 6.5 million and my husband was qualified for 6.5 million dollars so in together because you have to also think of the fact that if you're with somebody that um, contributes to the nht you have to remember that if that contributes to the nht then both of you could join up and you know purchase the property it could be i'm going to be off track from this step three it could be that um I think I have another point on this, but this can be point 3B. <laughs> so remember, you can also join with somebody. You can join with your spouse if both of you contribute to the NHD. Or 
you can you can join with your mother you can join with your sister if both of you contribute to the nht and when you're joining with people you have to bear in mind all the things that can happen and if it is that you're willing to you know purchase a property with this person because purchasing a house can be or a property can be something that is is like someone like this you know and i mean life happens and things can happen so you don't want to you know go into a, a process or a deal like this with somebody that you know um if things happen it's gonna go south and people gonna want to argue over this and argue about that you don't want to you don't want to do something like that so if you're going to join with somebody who is not your spouse you have to really think deep about what it is that you are doing so that's point three b um so yeah i was talking about point um step three so if it is that you are qualified for 6.5 million dollars you have to bear that in mind so when you're looking for a property you have to look within the range of 6.5 million dollars and i suggest you guys have to be strict with this step if you're looking anything that is above 6.5 don't look at it because you want to you want to operate within your means. You want to look houses that are within the amount that you can afford. I mean, you're going to see houses that you really like that are above your budget, but stick to your budget. If you are qualified for $6.5 million, remember the down payment amount for the market is normally some persons charge 10% and some persons charge 5% deposit. So you have to bear that in mind. If you're doing your calculation, if you're qualified for 6.5, you have to put it in the back of your mind say your deposit can be as much as $650,000 or it can be, I think it's three twenty-five. So 325000 So you have to bear that in mind. So you have to think about your savings. If your savings can reach up to 650 because they don't know who is going to ask for 10 percent and who's going to ask for five percent if they ask for five percent and you are you are already putting your hat to 650 you're in a great place so you have to bear that in mind point to note also if you are a single person trying to purchase a home it is possible i will not say to anybody that it is not possible it is possible because you have a lot of banks now and a lot of financial institutions who have partnered with the, with the nht to let persons be able to afford a house for themselves so if it is that you see a property that is more than the amount that you are qualified for you can still go through talk to like a bank or your financial institution they will fund like some of them are funding 95 percent of the property and all of that and and they go directly through the nhd but your mortgage will go when you pay a mortgage it goes it goes to the bank and they will send whatever amount to nhd um, I believe that's the process. So you, that is also a process, but you have to bear. That is also an option, but you have to bear in mind. Um, some banks' interest rates are higher than the NHT. I know. Um, for NHT government workers, they have they have really minimized or uh, the the interest rates and the the interest rates has really dropped over the years. I know for some um, government employees, they pay up to zero percent. I paid up to, I paid zero percent interest and paying no interest on my mortgage so if you're a government worker sometimes it works out for you I know for some income um, low income earners it is even one percent two percent so or even three percent so you guys can bear that in mind so it's really good to check with the NHT and if you are in a certain income band um, your interest rates has reduced normally it was five percent i believe but no it has really reduced and it's um the government is making it more easier for persons to access housing loans and to be able to buy their own property and that is something that i really appreciate i was so happy when they told me that i paid zero percent interest rate i was so happy the next thing that i wanted to say to you guys was um initially when we started our housing search we we did not contract a realtor we tried to do it on our own so as i said we used apps we used um facebook we used the gleaner the paper cleaner and when i i, I actually found that property through one of the apps and it sent me to a realtor 
um i will not say her name because i don't know if she would have wanted me to state it in the video but if she gives me um permission i will link her name and her contact down below so that you guys who are doing your search can contact her she is a great realtor she's the one who helped me as i said i found her when i saw a property on one of the apps i think it was keys that i liked and it sent me to her to to it sent me her contact to contact her about the property so that's how it all went down i believe it was keys I, don't quote me on it don't hold me to that but i know it was through something that i got contact to her maybe it was facebook don't remember been a while um so as i said if she give me the permission i'll drop her contact and her information down below um so yeah she's really great um she is one of the i've never met a realtor like her i mean i've never gotten it to be in any contact with any much realtors anyway but she was really i've spoken to many realtors they just they they like ask me what i want and if they don't find it that is it they don't contact it to ask if you got anything again or if you're still interested but this specific realtor she was i got a, i got the the understanding that she was she really wanted to help me because she checked up on me have you found anywhere else i'm gonna keep searching and she's checking on me and she's she was she was just absolutely great um so I, I forgot what I wanted to say, but I'm saying that she was absolutely great. Um, she, you don't have to pay her any upfront fees. So that was one of the best thing somebody could have told me. I didn't have to pay her any fees upfront. I really didn't pay her any money out of my pocket. I don't know if through the whole process, if the, 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 she got money after the house is sold or whatever. I don't know, but I didn't have to find the money to give to her out of my pocket. Um, so that was good for me even though i got the, the help from her which i really did appreciate um i really did i really didn't have it so hearing that was like a load off the shoulders yeah step four i mean all these steps are important so i won't say this is another important step but this is another important step you guys step four is when you need to start preparing to pay your deposit after you have identified the property prepare to start paying your deposit preparing means to you know get all your funds together really 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 look at it now you know and put everything together this is by, by this time you should have already spoken to your financial institution if you want help to pay that deposit and you know just really have everything together to to to, to see how you're gonna do it so that when you can really start getting in the process to execute so if the financial institution had needed any documents from you to get the loan process through go ahead i would have suggested that you would have gone ahead and done this already and um now preparing or close to the to, to the time for them to disperse the funds to you that so that you can have the funds ready um to pay your um deposit step five step five is another important one most persons i don't know if most persons do this but step five was it was important um all right is important acquire a lawyer i mean most persons uses nhc's lawyer i don't i've heard that before i don't really know if nhc have a lawyer or you can use their lawyer services i don't know how that go um but it is really important to acquire a lawyer for this whole process buying a house is a is a legal thing so getting your lawyer is of utmost importance person shy away because they think that it's gonna be a lot of money but i won't say it's not a lot of money it is a lot of money but it's necessary it is necessary um i acquired a lawyer through my realtor and i thank her again a million and one hundred times um this lawyer i don't know if she want me to link her information down below as well because i haven't asked them yet so if it is that she gives me permission i will definitely link her information down below so you guys can have that um she is 
not expensive i would i would i would say that she's not expensive she is understanding she cares she shows that she cares and she is efficient and i mean anybody purchasing a house wants somebody who is efficient for me i need somebody who is efficient i need somebody who would work hard for me because i'm paying you to work hard and i need somebody who stick to timelines i have a problem if you don't stick to timelines they tell me next week wednesday best believe next week wednesday i'm already so she was a person for me i mean she was she she was amazing she was amazing i don't think i can say that enough she's not expensive i think she charged um to for me she charged me two percent i don't know if her fees would raise at the time when you guys see this or when you guys contact her whatever that is but for me she charged two percent of the purchase price which was okay for me um the whole process in acquiring her i think you guys would have to she would do like um you'd have to retain her so you'd have to pay her half of the the fees before the process starts and then the other half after the whole process has ended when you do acquire a lawyer um she will she will tell you all the he or she will tell you all the information that you need to know what it is that you're they're charging you for or what the whole um thing will cover the amount that you're going to pay them what it covers them doing for you my lawyer was like this she listed out everything that she would have done for me and the amount that it would have cost um which was good for me um because i need to know what it is i'm paying you for so don't look at it that um some of the things that they charged is not necessary um, for her, i'm gonna speak from my lawyer for, for my lawyer she charged me for some things and i i didn't question it because at the end of the day there are a lot of paperwork that needs to be done there's a lot of documents that need to be looked over and read over um sales agreements and all those things that i will talk about um so you have to bear that in mind so sometimes if they are charging you an amount it is good if you see what they are charging you for so ask your lawyer to list out all the things that they are you they are charging you for so that you know what it is that you're charging for you know what it is that you should get in the process so step six would have been to pay the lawyer fee the lawyer fee for me it was two percent of the purchase price so what i did as i said before was we paid half of that per that amount we paid half of that amount um so you know get the ball rolling get the process going step seven so step seven is where it all goes down you guys it starts this is where you see that the process is actually starting step seven is where you pay your deposit you pay a deposit to your lawyer assuming that you have already retained your lawyer you would now pay the deposit to your lawyer so you pay the deposit to your lawyer the lawyer will pay the deposit to the the sellers oh one point to note guys for every process that you do and every money that you pay ensure that you get a receipt ensure that you get a receipt for every money that you pay ensure that you get a receipt so when you pay the money over to the lawyer for the lawyer fee ensure that the lawyer gives you a receipt for the money that you pay for the deposit ensure that you get a receipt and you keep these all these documents that you're doing in this process keep them safe keep them in order step eight now step eight is another see let, let me just say the further you go in the process the more serious it gets i don't want to use the word serious but it's more intense it gets so step eight is where you would now go to nht to set up your interview go to nht to set up your interview for the loan when you go to nht to set up your interview date for the loan um you would be asked again to bring in a lot of other documents when you went i didn't say this before but when you go to nhd the first first time when you go to nhd um they would probably if you didn't ask i would suggest you ask because i don't know if they will give it to you automatically um they will give you a slip and this slip contains all the information that you need all the the documents that you need to get when purchasing a a, a property or 
asking for a loan from NHD. Um, if I can put up a picture of it, I'll put it up right here. If not, it's a paper that tells you all the documents they need to, that you're going to need, like um, TRN, NIS, um, proof of address, pay slips, um, valuation for the property, survey of the court for the property, um, um, yeah, a lot of things. A lot of things they're going to ask you for. So you're going to, but all these things that they're asking you for, you'll be able to get once you, you know, find a property, once you go through the whole process. Don't, just tick them off one by one. Some of them you already have in your position. You must have your TRN, you must have your ID, you must have your NIS, you already have your pay slip. You're probably going to need to request a job letter from your organization. You already have proof of address. If you need to get a JP to sign that, you, you get the time, you can go and just, you know, get all these documents together. And this, as I said, will go in a separate folder because each of the different processes you want to keep them in a separate envelope so when you do go to nhd you're not looking through a million and one documents because you already have them put together that is very important you want to be organized in this process 